eight chatters. We just finished up at Synth Mines our first actually advanced prompt engineering course, and it went really well. The vibe was great, and Wes and I and Urash learned a lot from everybody. I think one of the greatest hits, though, was I showed people uh, what's called a cannoli in Obsidian, where you can string together uh, prompts and a chain and use your notes in your vaults to actually inform that process. A lot of people were like, wow, but then it's, I have no idea how to use this in cannoli. They have documentation, which we'll go over. But there's a lot of self-learning and thinking about, like, how do I actually string this together? So we're going to work towards that. So I'm going to start very simple, which means that if you are fairly well practiced in Obsidian, you can skip this video. <laughs> I'm just going to go over a reminder of how to use the canvas and access it. And then we're going to go download Cannoli and set it up. And then we'll actually get into using it in the next video. So feel free to skip if you're, you're a pro. Let's get started. The first thing we want to explore is what is a canvas? So you can get to the canvas on the sidebar here by just creating a new canvas. If you prefer the command palette, you can do canvas and create a new canvas, or you can set up a hotkey if that's what you want to do. But either way, all this is like a Miro board or any of those kind of whiteboard type things where it's a grid. And if I double click, it's going to bring up a box. I can say thing one, and then uh, you can set the color to whatever you want. It starts at gray, but let's say you want to make it purple or choose whatever color you want. This is to zoom over to it if you want to center it. And then again, if you just want to, you want to edit. So this is very simple, but the idea here is that you can create mind maps. So I make a second box and I can pull an arrow over here and I can say thing two. Okay. Now we're going to keep it just to text for this video because you don't need images and stuff like that. But the last thing I want to point out is you can actually connect it to notes as well. So now if I double click and I do our double brackets to bring up everything, I can put my daily note in here for today. I think that's today. So here's a note. So you can connect ideas to notes or the ideas can be the notes themselves. This just allows you to really get up on the balcony of things and start thinking again in these systems and these templates and in these workflows. I love using Canvas for just thinking through something because it has access to my notes. I can really connect things on a high conceptual level, but you can dive deeper because there's a note behind that. I just wanted to start there just to remind you because cannoli is going to use the canvas exclusively. So we need to know how to use this thing and start thinking in this way. Okay. Let's go download cannoli. So we go to our settings, community plugins, browse. We're going to look up cannoli. It's already installed for me. Sorry guys. You're going to have to hit install, enable, and then we're going to want to go to options. And you're going to see here, the first thing that comes up is you're going to want to add Cannoli College. This is really important. And that's because, let me just go to it to show you, this is the documentation. Cannoli College, and it does basic, special arrows, special nodes, vault interaction groups. And then within each of these, it essentially has a canvas set up with words around it to tell you what it can do. So you're going to, you're going to need that. That's, this is how I learned and how I taught myself is I had, this as backup and I was spent a lot of time messing up. So hopefully I can get you quickly over the hump here by showing you a little bit more, but let's go back to the plugin because you're going to have to set it up like you typically do. This is hooked up to chat GPT. So you're going to, you're going to need to go get your API key and put it in here. Cost threshold. This is important because as your cannolis get more complex. And if you're dealing with like much longer notes, that all gets fed into the API and, and you're paying for that. So I recently made a cannoli for a client that works really well, but it costs $5 each time you run it because of how much text is involved. So the idea here is you want to set this limit if you're worried about money, right? It, it probably only starts at 50 cents. That's going to be fine for most calls, especially in the beginning here. 
but just recognize you're using the API. If it's set to $5 because I was testing that thing, you might want to set that lower. Next is at least at the point of recording this, Canola hasn't been updated in a few months, which means you can only get the GPT-4 November version, which is fine, honestly. I think it's good, especially for this in the API. It, it works. So all you got to do is make sure that this is written out like this. You probably have GPT 3.5, blah, blah, blah. And if you want to stick with 3.5, that's totally fine too. Let's say you're watching this sometime in the future though. Cannoli has been updated. So you can always kind of change the model. All you got to do is go to platform.openai.com slash docs slash models, or you can just Google perplexity, whatever. OpenAI models will bring you to this page. You just want to come down to here where it starts listing them. And all you're going to have to do is copy and paste whatever the model is that you want to be pulling the API from. And then we'll come back to Obsidian and you just want to paste that in there. A couple, just a couple more things. If you like the temperature at a certain level, again, this is how random <laughs> the next token becomes. It becomes more creative at higher token limits. You typically, depending on what you're doing, want to keep it down. But if you're doing something creative, maybe you're trying to write some scenes of a movie or something like that. Maybe you do crank it up a bit. But just so you know, you can do this up and down. You're going to want to leave everything else the, the same for now. Again, if you're more advanced, you'll be able to take advantage of this stuff. But all you really got to do is up to here, the call concurrency limit. You don't have to change this. You're probably not going to be doing more than 50 concurrent calls, at least to start. So yeah, that's how you set it up. And then once you download it, if we go back to our canvas... Once you download it, you're going to see this little symbol here, start, stop, cannoli. And that's pretty much it for the setup. Okay. So we're going to do our first cannoli here. Actually, let's go to the documentation just so I can show you how it runs from the documentation. Okay. So let's do a quick rundown of how it works. So you're going to want to read through all this in the documentation, but pretty much all you need to know is gray square acts as a prompt to the large language model. Arrow just means where you send in this. And a purple box is an output. Okay. So think of this as the gray box as your system prompt and a purple box as it's outputting uh, what that from that system prompt. Or just the single prompt, whatever it is. <clears throat> so let's run this cannoli. And it's as simple as you should see this kind of cannoli-like symbol here. We're just going to click it. It says started cannoli one. It turns to yellow, letting you know that it's in that box, creating that completion. And then you can see here, it just responds. Hello, how can I assist you today? If you have any questions, you know, like a typical response from GPT-4. So that's it. Try it out. Try running your first cannoli. And then in the next video, we're going to start getting into more advanced stuff, setting up some variables and how you can actually create some of these workflows. So thank you chatters. Hope that was helpful. And this is going to be ridiculous.